So I'm pleased to be with you today in my capacity as Secretary of NCAI, and especially pleased to be able to moderate this very important panel featuring U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland. In March of 2021, Attorney General Merrick Garland was sworn in as the 86th Attorney General of the United States in March 2021. Now, prior to serving as Attorney General, Mr. Garland served as a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, a position he's held since 1997. The Department of Justice partners with tribal governments in critical ways to ensuring public safety across Indian country. We've seen this administration make many strong commitments to our tribal nations, including the executive order to improving public safety and criminal justice for Native Americans and addressing the crisis of missing or murdered indigenous people by between by and between the Justice, the Interior, and the Department of Homeland Security. among the agencies, elevating the of DOJ programs, but also in how the department interacts and respects tribal nations. The Gila River Indian community has a comprehensive public safety structure, including law enforcement and tribal courts. We exercise our jurisdiction under the Violence Against Women Act, and we have the only cold case office in Indian country that is co-located within our Gila River Police Department. So I'm very pleased, Attorney General Garland, that you have taken the time to be with us today. Welcome to NCAI. Welcome to Indian Country. We are looking forward to your remarks. Uh, thank you, Secretary Lewis, for that very kind introduction. Thank you, President Sharp and Mr. Desiderio for inviting me to join you today and for your leadership. On behalf of all of us at the Justice Department, I want to thank the National Congress of American Indians for your partnership over many decades. Almost 59 years ago, then Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy spoke to an NCAI convening in Bismarck, North Dakota. During those remarks, he outlined some of the obligations owed by the federal government to tribal communities and his commitment to fulfilling them. Today, the circumstances in which we are meeting are quite different. For one, I'm not able to be there in person, but I very much wish that we could. More important, meetings between the Justice Department and our tribal partners are no longer a rarity. I always appreciate the opportunity to affirm the department's commitment to working together with you. The Justice Department seeks to honor and strengthen our nation to nation partnership as we work together on behalf of tribal communities. And we seek to approach this effort with the respect, sincerity, and humility that our tribal partners deserve. Last November, I was happy to join the first White House Tribal Nations Summit held in five years. As I noted during my remarks at the summit, the Justice Department understands that open and honest conversations with our tribal partners are fundamental to a strong nation-to-nation -nation relationship. The department recognizes the diversity of thought and perspective among sovereign tribal nations. And we appreciate the opportunity to hear directly from tribal leaders from across the country. That is why last year, we held more major consultations than in any year prior. We are committed to continuing that engagement moving forward. This spring, for the first time in more than four years, the Justice Department's leadership will host a formal meeting with our Tribal Nations Leadership Council. Historically, this convening, made up of 12 tribal leaders elected within their regions, has been one of the best opportunities for the department's leadership team to substantially engage with tribal partners. Establishing and maintaining these strong lines of communication is especially important when it comes to working together to make tribal communities safer. The Justice Department is committed to addressing the crisis of missing or murdered indigenous people with the urgent and urgency and resources that it demands. Many communities across the country are grappling with an increase in violent crime. 
but many tribal communities have suffered from unacceptable rates of violence for decades. I know that you have just heard from Secretary Holland, who has been an essential partner in our ongoing effort to develop a comprehensive strategy to prevent and respond to violence against Native Americans. In addition to working with our, our other federal partners to that end, we are also providing the resources that tribal governments, courts, and law enforcement partners need to help reduce crime and support victims. I particularly want to thank the NCAI for your work in advocating for the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, which was finally introduced last week. Among other things, the proposed bill would strengthen and expand the recognition of tribal criminal jurisdiction that was enacted in 2013. The Justice Department has been a vocal proponent of these provisions, which help ensure tribal nations can hold accountable those who harm tribal members. We continue to urge Congress to act to pass this bill into law. As I said at the beginning of my remarks, the Justice Department is committed to working alongside US partners. We do so with respect, sincerity, and a shared interest in the well being of tribal communities. I'm, look for, I'm looking forward to your questions. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much for your remarks, Attorney General Garland, and for sharing the department's focus for Indian country. Uh, we will now go to questions from our attendees. So if you have a question uh, for the Attorney General, please put it in the Q&A box. And while we're getting the questions for the Attorney General, I will start with a question, um, uh, Attorney General Garland, about the very important development in Congress last week, as you know. Just last week, NCAI and tribal nations were pleased to see the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, the legislation uh, introduced with strong bipartisan support and with critical provisions that affirm and expand tribal jurisdiction over non-Indian perpetrators that target Native women children, elders, and tribal justice officials. So I have a two-part question for you. First, does the department support the VAWA reauthorization introduced in the Senate? And will you work with NCAI and tribal governments to get this legislation enacted into law? And second, which is builds on that, uh, is uh, what can tribal governments do now to begin to prepare, to be proactive, for expanded implementation, should this reauthorization be enacted as we all hope and pray it will be? Attorney General Garland. Well, I'm grateful that you asked an easy question to begin. The answer to your first question is unequivocally yes. We will definitely support the bill. The Justice Department has vocally supported this legislation ever since I became Attorney General. In October, I convened a listening session regarding the importance of reauthorizing and strengthening VAWA particularly to include recognizing expanded tribal jurisdiction. In the same month, the Deputy Attorney General testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee on behalf of the VAWA reauthorization, again, including expanded jurisdiction for the tribes. I want to thank NCAI, which I know is, whose work I know has been extremely important in getting this bill to where we are today. I also know that Senators Murkowski and Schatz are joining you today, and I wanna thank them in advance for their support of the VAWA reauthorization. Now on the question that you, the second part of your question, which is what can you do uh, to be prepared to exercise expanded jurisdiction? So one of the reasons we advocated for this legislation is because the rates of violence experienced by native women is simply unacceptable. Our work to implement special domestic violence criminal jurisdiction from the 2013 VAWA reauthorization has laid a solid uh, um, blueprint for how we can expand our efforts. In consultation and partnership with tribal partners, we will seek to provide grants and technical assistance. For example, our inner tribal technical assistance working group on special domestic violence criminal jurisdiction has helped to develop and promote privately driven strategies. With funding from the Office for Violence Against Women, NCAI, NCAI has partnered with us 
provide technical assistance. So I think these are all examples of way in which you can prepare and you can help us preparing ourselves and you for the expansion. Uh, thank you, Attorney General. And I want to also uh, just to let the, the, the attendees know that in the chat, uh, NCI has put the Senate Bill 3623, the Vowel Bill, uh, they put that, uh, the link to that, and also the link to NCI's VAWA toolkit as well, uh, as well as uh, accessing the jurisdiction webpage, NCI VAWA jurisdiction webpage. It's all in the chat for the attendees. Okay, now uh, a second question. Uh, the executive order, uh, Attorney General, on improving public safety and criminal justice for Native Americans. Now this type of an executive order will take a number of agencies working together to accomplish your objectives. What plans are in place to bring those various federal agencies together around this important executive order? And what opportunities will there be for tribal government engagement and input into the implementation of the executive order? So federal government agencies will be working closely with each other, particularly uh, my agency and Secretary Hollins. Long before the executive order was signed, the secretary and I announced plans to establish a joint commission on the Not Invisible Act. It's a legislation, of course, that she championed. Our teams work closely together in many capacities, including by leading the White House Council on Native American Affairs on Public Safety and Justice. Under the Biden executive order, our departments will build on our existing collaborative efforts to work with other federal agencies and federal law enforcement to create a comprehensive strategy to prevent and respond to violence against Native Americans. Thank you, Attorney General. Uh, the next question is, when it comes to public safety in Indian country, there's often a need for cooperation between tribal and federal law enforcement and attorneys. Uh, that cooperation has not always been consistent. Uh, will you commit the DOJ to developing a policy in consultation with tribal leaders that will set out the requirements for U.S. attorneys to work with tribal nations in good faith, respectfully, and tribal criminal justice officials when cases take place on tribal lands? If we cannot achieve our joint goal of reducing violence in tribal areas without mutual respect, particularly respect on our side uh, for the concerns of the tribal governments. Since 2010, every U.S. Attorney's Office within, within Indian Country, uh, I, I'm sorry, that it, with Indian Country responsibility has had an operation plan, including certain core tribal communication elements. I obviously understand that has worked better some times and less well in other times. Earlier this month, I directed all of our United States attorneys to hold dedicated session with law enforcement partners, including with tribal partners, to continue identifying ways to disrupt violent crime together. A few weeks before that, we directed our U.S. attorneys to update their operational plans and protocols to include regionally appropriate guidelines for responding to missing or murderous, murdered indigenous persons cases. So the answer is we will uh, be in, uh, engaged with you. We know that that is, that is the only way we are gonna solve these problems. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, also um, we need to, I think there's some, some sound issues I see in the chat. Um, attendees, uh, if you have any questions, please again, put those in the chat as well. Now I'm gonna to go to uh, another area. The federal land management agencies and the US Department of Justice need to do more to consult with tribes, seek tribal participation and advocate for tribal interests when there is a federal prosecution to enforce cultural protection laws. For example, in a plea agreement that is pending in a case related to taking of culturally important sacred artifacts from the U.S. Forest Service lands, there was very little notice or input 
for tribes to work with the U.S. Attorney's Office. Now, as a result, local tribes are questioning the charges filed, the pending plea agreement, and slight penalty. As such, following President Biden's Tribal Leader Summit last November, will the federal agencies, along with the Department of Justice, commit to doing more to prioritize these cultural resource issues, including tribal participation? Thank you for that question. Uh, the Justice Department is committed to protecting culturally important artifacts and doing so in partnership with tribal stakeholders. This is a commitment that we share with the Interior Department. Justice Department provides, provides training and prosecuting these time, types of cases as part of our Indian country training initiatives. I can't speak to any uh, pending cases, and, I, uh, and, and in particular, I don't know the particulars of, of the one that you raised, but I urge you to reach out to our Office of Tribal Justice so we can hear more about your concerns and to continue our partnership in this very important area. Thank you, uh, Attorney General, for joining us today. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Again, thank you. We greatly appreciate your leadership and commitment for supporting public safety and justice in Indian country and NCI looks forward to continuing to work with you uh, on important public safety initiatives for tribal communities. Thank you, it was very nice to be with you today. I appreciate the chance to come and speak with you. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir.